In the last video, we had a look at who the most powerful and most useful blades are in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now we're going to delve into the underwhelming and weakest of weak alike. So, truth be told, there aren't really that many truly bad blades. And I'm doing a disclaimer right now. You shouldn't feel bad for using these blades. I would be willing to bet real money that you can complete the story and do most, if not all, of the post-game content using any or all of the blades I'm about to feature. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a single player game. It is well designed and what that means is that you can use any goddamn blade you want and the game isn't going to make things impossible for you just because you're using that blade. Now, with that said, let's take a look at the slightly underwhelming and least powerful blades the game has to offer. Starting with DPS blades, we've got Gorg bringing up the rear. Unfortunately for the little merman, he is just a mess. He doesn't do very good damage, his arts take forever to recharge, his passive traits are all situational, and his arts in general just suck. Especially because a great axe user should at least be able to add some decent utility to the topple launch smash combo. Not far behind is poor Perun. Let it be known that I love Perun, and I did a majority of the game with Perun, but she is just lacking. The only way to do maximum DPS is if one of your party members is dead. It's without a doubt the worst modifier in the game for a DPS blade, and Perun overall is built more for survivability than attacking, which is next to useless if you have a dedicated tank in your party. And that's all for DPS really, a lot of people put Azami down here with Perun due to her situational modifier requiring you to be under 30% health to activate, which is not a situation you'll find your DPS driver in very often, but it's certainly less situational than Perun's and when you are at low health, Azami has insane DPS. Moving on to healers, and again the list is short. Way down the bottom is Adenine, and the reason should be obvious if you've ever put her on your healing driver. Adenine really doesn't heal. Well, she does, but it's weak and she only has one healing art. Adenine is actually built more for DPS, and she has some utility in her ability to increase drop rates, but overall her healing potential is by far the lowest in the game. Korra is the only other lackluster healer. Not to say that Korra is bad, but there is very little party-wide healing to be had and only really benefits some kind of potion healing setup. Plus, Korra has a next to useless passive that binds an enemy for a couple of seconds. The reason it's useless is because the only thing binding does is stop the enemy from moving. They can, and will, still attack you. And finally, the tanks. I mentioned in my most powerful blades video that the tank category doesn't have any truly terrible blades. The tanks have a few outstanding exceptions that lead the pack, but the rest are all pretty tight knit. There are two tanks that are underwhelming compared to the rest just due to having less utility though. Godfrey is the one that most people will mention as the weakest, which is true, but even so, Godfrey is still a decent tank. It's just his passives aren't very useful and there are other tanks with comparable stats that also happen to have slightly more useful passives. Percival is the other tank just below the bulk of the pack and it's because he finds himself in a similar spot to Adenine. He is built for DPS, really not tanking. He basically adds no survivability, his passive is incredibly situational and the only way to boost his survivability basically destroys the two strengths that he has, which is aggro and DPS. And there we have it. We've done all the most powerful blades and now all the weakest. If a blade hasn't been mentioned in either video, you can safely assume they are just an average blade. They didn't fall into either extreme. And there are plenty of blades right in the middle. I will be working on a part three in this series so I can cover Tora and Poppy and possibly even a part four to cover common blades, which can actually be really good. So keep an eye out for those. Hit the like button if you like this video, jump down into the comment section and tell us which blade you aren't ashamed to use. You might even get a sense of satisfaction beating super bosses with underwhelming blades. Who knows? Check out the links in the video description to help support the channel. Hit the subscribe button and have a good day or night and I'll see you all soon.